Do we have enough materials to build all the EV batteries that are going to be required? Frankly, no, not right this second. We, we don't have enough materials um, in the supply chain to build everything today. How worried are you about it? I, I am pretty worried. The production of lithium iron phosphate, or LFP, batteries is dominated by Chinese companies like BYD and Contemporary Amprex Technology Limited, or CATL. More than 80% of the world's raw lithium is mined in Australia, Chile, and China. China controls more than half of the world's lithium processing and refining, and has three-fourths of the lithium-ion battery megafactories in the world. Chinese investors control about 70% of Congo's mining sector. China also has over 80% control of the cobalt refining industry, where the raw material is turned into commercial-grade cobalt metal suitable for use in EVs. While battery prices have fallen 89% between 2010 and 2020, they still make up about 30% of the total cost of an electric vehicle. In this video, Tesla co-founder JB Strawball has an urgent warning about imminent supply chain shortages and shares new information about his battery recycling company Redwood Materials, plus China's total dominance of battery production and the risks this poses. So let's get into the video. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks, and get some free stocks and crypto. Check out the the links in the pinned comment below. You can get two free stocks with Weeble, a free stock with Stake, free Bitcoin with Coinbase, and free Bitcoin with BlockFi, and the BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards credit card. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment themed merch in the merch store. If you want to take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. So check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support. The sheer magnitude of, of the, the waste and scrap problem and the magnitude of batteries that, that need to get recycled is, I think, shocking to most people. You are looking at bags and bags of depleted lithium ion batteries. Batteries from electric cars, phones, scooters, laptops, tablets, cameras, you name it. These old batteries are still filled with materials that are as good as new. Batteries are amazing that way because the, the metals and the critical materials inside of them uh, are very highly recyclable. We recover 95, 98% of many of those critical materials like nickel and cobalt and, and copper. Essentially all of those metals are able to go back straight into reuse again and again. Now the info on battery recycling is fascinating, but I just want to ask, am I the only one who noticed up on screen right now? Mother liquor? This is JB Straubel. He is a co-founder and longtime chief technology officer of Tesla. He was the mastermind behind many of Tesla's core technologies, particularly around the battery tech. He left Tesla in 2019 so he could focus on recycling all of these batteries. He gave CNBC an inside look at his startup Redwood Materials, where he is already recycling tons of batteries and sending some of the recovered materials to Panasonic so the battery maker can put them right back into Tesla's cars. Batteries are indeed everywhere these days. And the demand for lithium-ion batteries has risen sharply in the past five years and is expected to grow from $44.2 billion in 2020 to $94.4 billion by 2025, mostly due to electric cars. EVs are expected to hit 10% of global passenger vehicle sales by 2025, rising to 58% of sales by 2040. You know, the troubling thing about the imminent supply chain shortages are the fact the experts, using the term extremely loosely here, are massively underestimating how quickly the adoption of electric vehicles, sustainable energy and transportation actually takes place. Let me just put this on the record. These clowns are so far off the mark, it really is embarrassing and they deserve ridicule. I think in 2040, 58% of new vehicles EVs, they're more than 10 years off the mark, will exceed 58% well before 2030. You can count on it. And hey, I'm on the record, keep me accountable. Do we have enough materials to build all the EV batteries that are gonna be required? Frankly, no, not right this second. We, we don't have enough materials um, in the supply chain to build everything today. So growth has to happen in the supply chain for all these vehicles. Just keep this urgent warning from JB Straubel in mind next time you hear a legacy automotive manufacturer make bold claims about how many hundreds of thousands or millions of electric vehicles they'll be producing by X, Y, or Z date this decade, given how late they were to the electric vehicle party, remember? Tesla's original Roadster was mid-2000s. The Model S came out a decade ago. There's a very, very, very high probability that these companies haven't actually secured supply chain, materials, resources, parts, and they're not actually going to be capable of fulfilling their promises. Battery cells mined from raw materials often travel more than 20,000 nautical miles from mine to automaker. 
a supply chain that is far from sustainable. The materials in EV battery cells, for example, could have been mined in South America, Africa, Indonesia, and Australia. Then they are often sent to China for refining, and then in Tesla's case, sent to the US for cell production at Panasonic in Nevada at the Gigafactory. And a significant shortage of battery materials is looming in the near term for materials like lithium, nickel, cobalt, and copper. Right now, demand is outstripping supply five years down the road, correct? That's correct. How worried are you about it? Well, I, I am pretty worried that this could become a bottleneck to electrifying everything that people are hoping to do. You know, I think it's going to be a bit painful when, when all of these factories try and ramp at the same time. And recycling and, and being able to efficiently reuse those materials can relieve some of the burden on the need for new mines or finding new resources. This absolutely could be more profitable than mining. You know, mining has the fluctuation and total dependency on the raw material cost, which makes it really a different kind of industry. You know, we're more focused on the manufacturing and the conversion cost, but you know our business moves up and down with the commodity price, whereas a mine is totally linked to that. Straubel says the plan is to continue to improve recycling technology and to create an entirely closed-loop system, so recycling can actually surpass geological mining. We are, you know, actively, you know, setting up facilities and looking for locations uh, in Europe, you know, perhaps Norway, perhaps Germany and also some smaller facilities you know, on the other you know, corners of, of the US, perhaps Texas, perhaps somewhere in the Midwest. When I think you know, about the you know, maybe distant future, when we're operating as a really sustainable society and economy, you know, we need to be productively unbuilding you know, everything that we've built. Man, what a brilliant description there from JB Straubel. Now, for those who don't know, it's inevitable that the world, humanity, will be entering an era of energy abundance, super abundance, hyperabundance, where we have way more energy than we know what to do with. Tony Sieber and Adam Dore of Rethink X have made some great presentations and discussion on this, so if you're curious, jump on Google or YouTube, you'll find what you're looking for. The point is, when we do have an abundance of energy, far more than we currently need, it can be used to do things like completely recycle products today that it's just not worth doing. We don't get our money back, so what's the point? It ends up in landfill. In the future, we'll actually have the resources to completely recycle everything, basically back down to the atoms. When I think you know, about the you know, maybe distant future, when we're operating as a really sustainable society and economy, you know, we need to be productively unbuilding you know, everything that we've built. You know, this is kind of the tip of the proverbial iceberg. We're currently recycling you know, several gigawatt hours uh, of, of energy storage per year. That seems like a big amount, but it's only maybe one or two percent of what's actually being built today. So if you look ahead, you know, we need to be operating at a hundred times the scale we are now in, in just a few short years. You know, this has to get solved. There really is no alternative. You know, we can't just sort of dump these batteries into the ocean or into a landfill, you know, it just, it just doesn't work. So, you know, I really enjoy working on slightly underdog problems that are not getting enough attention where, you know, with a small team, you know, we can affect a big industry in the future and we can invent some things that are going to have a dramatic impact on, on a huge portion of the industry. I'm super bullish on red materials. Regular viewers of the channel will already know this. JB Straubel is an absolute beast and the opportunity they're going after is enormous. And now onto China's dominance, and I mean complete and utter domination of the global battery market and the risks this poses. Lithium actually is not a major component of the cost of batteries, but it's like the blood in your body. It's the chemistry behind how lithium ion batteries work. It remains the common denominator in all the battery technologies even that we're looking at now for next generation batteries. The price of lithium is soaring and establishing domestic supply of lithium has become the modern day version of oil security. But today, the United States is far behind with only 1% of global lithium being mined and processed in the US. More than 80% of the world's raw lithium is mined in Australia, Chile, and China. China controls more than half of the world's lithium processing and refining, and has three-fourths of the lithium-ion battery megafactories in the world. So let me know in the comments below if you can see any parallels between China's dominance of global lithium production and, let's say, many countries around the world, many dozens of countries around the world, being partially dependent on Russia for fossil fuels, including natural gas and oil. China was really the first place where the where the EV revolution started taking off in a way that it hasn't in the US, but it is now happening in Europe. So the fact that a lot of lithium conversion capacity is in China is just an artifact of the fact that they had to start making batteries five to 10 years sooner than the rest of us did. On a per capita basis, I suspect we're gonna be one of the biggest users of lithium in the world. And frankly, 
sending lithium to uh, lithium carbonate we, we may make in the U.S. and sending it to China for further processing makes absolutely no sense. We need to have that independent production. China is able to do things in a very impressive manner, but they aren't always our friends. And if we were suddenly cut off from lithium batteries, that would change our ability to respond to climate change in, in a substantial way. This is an incredibly important point. This really is a matter of national security for many countries globally. If they're unable to secure lithium supply, either from a local very friendly neighbor or actually mine and refine lithium locally, they have a big problem. Demand for lithium ion batteries is exploding. If you're partially or wholly reliant on another country, they really do have you by the balls. The amount of different metals found in an EV battery can vary depending on the battery type and car model. But a typical lithium ion battery pack may contain around 14 kilograms of cobalt. Cobalt has been a popular choice for batteries because the metal increases battery life and energy density, which in the case of EVs means range. By keeping the battery structure stable as the battery is continuously charged and discharged, but cobalt, which is usually extracted as a byproduct of nickel and copper mining, is one of the most expensive materials in a battery. While battery prices have fallen 89% between 2010 and 2020, they still make up about 30% of the total cost of an electric vehicle. For a typical vehicle with a, say, an 80 kilowatt hour battery today, we estimate that cobalt content alone costs around $800 in that battery, so that's not insignificant. Elon Musk has been talking about removing cobalt from Tesla's batteries since 2018, and some of the company's China-made vehicles are already using cobalt-free technology. The reason that Tesla has been able to transition their entry-level vehicles to LFP batteries is because they're so far ahead of their so-called competition on powertrain and battery thermal management, etc. They've got years of experience. Therefore, Tesla can get much more range out of an equivalent LFP battery than any competitor can. This means Tesla has the luxury of using a much more affordable battery in their vehicles and still getting competitive range. Tesla's competition today is so far behind, they do not have this luxury. For the past four years, the average cost of cobalt was more than the cost of all the other battery metals put together. The price of cobalt has also historically been very volatile. Chinese investors control about 70% of Congo's mining sector. China also has over 80% control of the cobalt refining industry, where the raw material is turned into commercial-grade cobalt metal suitable for use in EVs. Okay, nothing to worry about there. China only controls about 70% of global cobalt mining and a mere 80% of the refining process. There's definitely no issues here. <clears throat> Different types of lithium ion batteries are distinguished by the metals that make up the cathode. This is where cobalt is found. Today, the market is dominated by NMC batteries, whose cathodes contain nickel, manganese, and cobalt. Depending on the proportions of each metal in the cathode, which are represented by the numbers following the cathode names, you will get different properties in the battery. Battery and car manufacturers try to optimize battery chemistry on the parameters of cost, life cycle, safety, and range. Some cobalt-free batteries do already exist, but there are trade-offs. There is already a viable cobalt-free battery, and that is lithium iron phosphate, or LFP. But the main downside of LFP is low energy density and therefore driving range. The production of lithium iron phosphate, or LFP, batteries is dominated by Chinese companies like BYD and Contemporary Amprex Technology Limited, or CATL. Is that the 420 quadrillionth or quintillionth time we've heard China and dominance in the same sentence in this video? I hope everyone watching has gotten the sense that China really is in a dominant position in terms of global battery production, and this is not a good thing, unless of course you're China. Tesla already uses LFP batteries in the Model 3 and Model Y vehicles it manufactures in China, and the company says it will now expand use of LFP batteries to all of its entry-level Model 3 and Model Y vehicles. Our long-range vehicles use a nickel-based cathode, and we use nickel because nickel has higher energy density for our long-range vehicles. But for our standard-range vehicles, and for stationary storage, I think all of that will move to iron cathodes. So moving to, to an iron-based uh, chemistry, which is sort of finally at the point where it's, it's competitive on range when combined with uh, an efficient powertrain, uh, I think that will be the, the vast majority of, of batteries in the future will be iron-based. It should be obvious by now the world has a major, urgent problem, and that is battery supply. Demand for lithium-ion batteries is growing exponentially, yet we do not currently have 
the resources, the materials, the mines, the processes, and the localized production and refinement to actually make this happen. You heard JB Straubel, a Tesla co-founder currently running Redwood Materials, a battery recycling company, describing how he is concerned. At this point in time, we don't have the supply. There's gonna be some problems. This is a great opportunity for JB, and I think Redwood will do exceptionally well. More broadly speaking, I think the only company in the electric vehicle space that's gonna be able to move through this transition relatively unscathed will be Tesla after all. They've been thinking about these things for a decade, a decade and a half longer than any other companies on the planet. They've locked in as many long-term supply contracts at reasonable prices as they possibly can. We saw at Tesla's Battery Invest today, they've developed their own battery cells to halve battery costs and they've developed new processes. They even invented a new technique for mining none other than lithium, seriously. So it appears Tesla's in the box seat. Most other companies that are attempting to build electric vehicles at scale, if they can ever get to volume production without going bankrupt first, then that's a major if. They then face the colossal Mount Everest size challenge of dealing with global supply chain shortages. Imagine you're a mining company and some EV startup says, hey, yeah, in uh, seven years time, we're gonna need lots of materials, lots of batteries from you, but we might go bankrupt. Meanwhile, you've got Tesla's like, bro, give us literally every cell you can make for the next decade, we'll take them all. Who do you think gets the supply contract? I don't think most of these companies have any idea how much pain they're in for. Hope you guys and girls have enjoyed the video and a reminder, click the card in the corner or the link in the pinned comment to join Patreon. You'll instantly gain access to my Tesla price targets out over the next 10 years in the bear case, the base case, the bull case, and the hyper bull case, plus over 100 exclusive Q&A videos and loads of other content as well. So check the link in the pinned comment and I'll see you over there. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem and I love you all. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks, and get some free stocks and crypto. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. You can get two free stocks with Weeble, a free stock with Stake, free Bitcoin with Coinbase, and free Bitcoin with BlockFi, and the BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards credit card. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment theme merch in the merch store if you want to take it to the next level. Join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. So check out the links in the pinned comment below, and thanks for your support. And if if you're still watching, you're awesome. I read every single comment on this channel and I really appreciate your feedback. So if you've got any thoughts on today's video, questions, comments, or suggestions for a new video, let me know in the comments below. Check the cards on screen now to browse the merch store, join Patreon, or watch the next video.